Go ahead, brother. Happy Sabbath. Happy High Sabbath, everyone. Happy, Happy Sabbath, Sabbath, brother. Happy Sabbath, brother. Uh, we're going to open up with Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, the Ten Commandments. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And I have read for you Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. May the Lord God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his mighty word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's go, brother. Turn this off. Freeze, y'all. <laughs> I'd like to say happy... High Sabbath to everyone. This is one of the Lord's Sabbath day, which is called the Memorial of Blowing the Trumpets. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And like I said, the title of the message is The Memorial of Blowing the Trumpets. I just want to make this really, really an urgent message because tonight or today is a very, very important day that we all must understand and follow the instructions of the Lord. We have seven trumpets that, that will hit this earth of the time of the end. So we must understand what to do and where to be once this happens. Because 99% of the world is that, well, put it like this, is, the ones in the Southern Church are waiting on the rapture. And before the so-called rapture comes, what they say, you got six trumpets got to blow. And then the Lord is going to come on the seventh trump. Come on, bro. So we must understand that through this lesson. Because God give us these high days so we can understand the blueprint of the end and the blueprint of this world and how it's set up and how it's going to be taken down. So if you don't understand this, you're going to be sheep for the slaughter, as the scriptures say. So this is why God designs his, designed his high holy days so we can celebrate it every year. This is an annual high Sabbath that we must keep. And we have instructions inside of every one of God's feast days. But like I said before, 99.99% of the world is a secret to them. And the little 1% that knows this, they are not keeping them correctly. So this lesson is put together to help us. So I want us to start in Leviticus chapter 23 to see why we are here. This is nothing about the Jews' feast. This is not about the Christian feast. These are the Lord's feasts or high days. Understand that. These are all Jesus. He put these in place for us 
to make sure we are doing exactly what he told us to do. And believe me, if you're not keeping these things correctly, salvation for you is, is over. Period. It's over. You got to keep the Sabbath, which is the high Sabbath and the weekly Sabbath. So we're going to break this lesson down so you understand about the memorial blowing the trumpets. Because most of the world is looking for a rapture. Believe me, it's not going to be a rapture. It is a period. You can't read it nowhere in the Bible. Period. Rapture. If you can get it, if you can find it, I'll give you $100. All right, Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to start with verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Yes, sir. Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So these are the feasts of the Jews? Yes, sir. These are the feasts of the Christians? Mm -hmm. No, these are the feasts of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Whatever language you speak in there, it's Jesus the Christ. We speak English right here. So we're going to go by what we understand. Go ahead. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Yes, sir. And holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. See, you also include this, the weekly Sabbath into this. The weekly Sabbath is the seventh day, which is Saturday as we call it in the world. But the world don't understand that they keep in Sunday. It's very important that you understand the days of the week. The days of the week don't start with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No, it starts with Sunday, which is the first day of the week. And then you go all the way down to Saturday, which is the seventh day of the week. Check your calendar. It's on there. Go ahead. Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of who? Of the Lord. I want to emphasize that. These are Jesus Christ's feasts. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. This is the season that we proclaim it in. A holy convocation is a gathering of what we're doing today. We are following the instructions of the, of the Lord. He told us to get together on all his high days, including the seventh day Sabbath. We finish with that. Jump down to verse 23. Let's see why we are here today. Today. This memorial blowing the trumpet to get our instructions. Because you got to know what you're doing, y'all. I'm telling you. This Bible got a lot of information in it. And believe me, we can't understand it. We only know part of it. The Lord going to have to give us the other part when we get back. Because our minds can't fathom this. It can't hold what's all in here. Amen. Let's see why we're here today. Leviticus chapter 23, we start at verse 23. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Yes, sir. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, yes, sir. shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. You see how meticulous God is? The seventh day of the first month. The seventh month of the first day, you should have a Sabbath and a holy convocation. What are we doing on that day? Go ahead. Ye shall do no servile work therein, mm -hmm. but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. That means that we are off today, which is sundown to, and Friday. We don't go to work. I won't be working because this is the instruction of the Lord. We do not go to our job. We take off. These are the commandments. Go ahead. Verse 21. We feel that? Okay. Now let's get let's go to Matthew chapter 24. I just want to show you why we are here today. It's the memorial of blowing of trumpets. Because these trumpets are pointing to the future which we are living in, which is the end of the world. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to start with verse 1. If you need some pencil, we need a pencil and some paper to write these scriptures down so you can go back over them, we can get you some. Matthew 24, we're going to start with verse 1. Let's break down the memorial blowing the trumpets because it is very, very vital for our salvation and very, very vital for our protection and safety. Matthew 24, we're going to start with verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to show 
came to, to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Yes, sir. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, there should not be left here one stone upon another that should not be thrown down. Now Jesus is telling his disciples that Solomon's temple is going to be destroyed. And it was destroyed in 70 AD. You can go back and research it. That's the last time that we was a nation before we were scattered all over the world in slave ships. 70 AD. You can read the Babylon Timothy 2. You can read it in your history book. Go ahead. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Listen to what the disciples were asking Jesus about our day. We living in this day. Go ahead. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He tell them, he, the disciple asked Jesus, what's the time of the end? And the end of the world. These trumpets point to the end of the world. And believe me, you got to be familiar with these trumpets, y'all. Because once we read these trumpets, you're going to understand why you need to be familiar with them. Go ahead. Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's the first thing he said. Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. Not even me. If, I, if you don't hear me read it, don't believe it. Don't let no man deceive you. Oh, one man. Go ahead. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Yes, sir. And shall deceive many. Go ahead. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You understand what he's saying? You hear wars and rumors of war. This ain't new. Don't we hear wars all the time? Rumors of wars? So we already doing this right now. We living in this time. These are the beginning of sorrow. This is what about to bring the end. Go ahead. Verse 7. For nations shall rise against nations. Yes, sir. And kingdom against kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Nation rise against nation. China against Japan. America against Russia. Black against white. White against black. Muslim against Jewish people. We living in those days, these days right now. So this is just the beginning. Go ahead. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrow. See what I told you? These are the beginning of sorrow. It, when you look at the news today, isn't it sorrowful to watch the news? To see what's going on in the world? Every time you turn on the news, it's something bad happening. It's rather something good they report. Because we are, getting, we are living in these sorrowful times. Go ahead. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Yes, sir. And shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's coming. The ones that know this law, they're going to deliver you up and going to try to kill you. That people over there keeping the Sabbath day. They tell the people not to celebrate Christmas. They tell them to celebrate the more you're blowing the tr trumpets. These are the things that are going to come at us, at us at the time because if you're not in the wilderness or the place of safety, God can't protect you. He cannot. So you got to be in the wilderness at this time. Don't think like you understand what's going on when you're not following the book. This is what he says right here. Go ahead. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Ain't they offended right now? Go tell them that you're going to hell for eating swine. Go tell them you're going to hell for eating crab and shrimp. Go tell them that and see how they hate you. Go tell them that their grandma ain't in heaven right now. No, my grandma ain't in heaven. Look it down on me. Jesus said, I got to raise these souls up at the last day, which is the seven trump. But they will hate you for telling your grandma still in the ground. Go ahead. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. We got so many of those, boy, in them Sunday churches and all over the world. Go ahead. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Where's the love in this world? Where's the love amongst our people in Israel? We killing our brothers and sisters all day long. Black on black crime. Y'all think about the white folks, the, white, the cops against the black? No, we got a bigger problem between our nation. Amen. 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 We don't love each other. Well, one cop, white cop shoot a black cop, oh, all hell break loose. But when we kill out each other every day, nobody's saying that no march. We got a bigger problem. Go ahead. Verse 13. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. See, you got to endure to the end. You're going to be saved. Come on. And these seven trumpets are going to show you what he mean by enduring. 
Jump down to verse uh, 21. These times are going to be terrible, y'all. And this is why God wants us to keep the memorial blowing the trumpet so we can continue to understand. Because the war that goes on in our body is the mind. Wherever the mind goes, the body will follow. If your mind is not conditioned, you're not going where God tells you to go in these scriptures, which is the place of safety at these seven trumps, before these seven trumps blow. Let's see some. Jump out of verse 21. Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Jesus said, it's not going to be, it's going to be great tribulation. You ain't never seen this before. Not even in the movies. They can't depict this. The worst horror movie that you, you have seen don't line up with this. Great tribulation. When these trumpets are blown. Go ahead. 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. You see what he said? Except he shorten no day, no flesh will be saved. Because this man is so crazy in every nation, they have nuclear warheads. They can fire nuclear warheads and destroy the whole world, all flesh. Before they push the button, God said, I'm going to come back on that seven trunk to do my business. Read that again. 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Yes, sir. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Who's the elect? The Israelites that understand the high holy days, the commandments. We are the elect. We got to teach the world. So every social media site, every every voice, every I mean, every time you mention something about the end, come to the book and give God the glory and show people. This is why these high days are so important that we can show people what's about to happen at the end to protect ourselves and our families. Go ahead. 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, Believe it not. Don't believe it. Let me show you why I don't believe it. Because they're going to tell you it's a rapture coming. They're going to be looking for Jesus. And the man of sin is going to go in the temple over there in Jerusalem and say, Christ is here now. He's going to claim to be Jesus. Let me show you why it's so important to be in the wilderness or the place of safety at this time. Let's go to Revelation chapter 8. Let's see the great tribulation and how it will play out. Because you got to start this thing off with these trumpets. These trumpets are very vital. Revelation chapter 8. We're going to start with verse 1. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1. To understand why we're here. Why we're celebrating these high days. So you can prepare yourself in the mind. Prepare yourself. If you love your family, you're teaching this. Revelation 8 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Yes, sir. And Under, I, understand this seal, when the trumpet's blown, the seal got to open. That seal contains a certain amount of pain and destruction that's supposed to hit the earth. When you blow the trumpet, he's telling that seal, go do your work. Conduct your business on this earth. That was the angel blowing that trumpet. This is what he's saying. Go ahead. Verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. Yes, sir. And to them were given seven trumpets. So we got seven trumpets with seven seals. Let's break these seals, these trumpets down first and see what they bring into the earth. Jump down to verse 6. Go ahead. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Go ahead. The first angel sounded. And there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. Yes, sir. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burned up. And all green grass was burned up. Can you understand this in your mind? A third part of the trees were burned up. Hell coming from the, from the heavens to the ground like blood. Because it's going to be lighting up so many people and killing so many people. They ain't going to be able to stand a third of the people going to die. And also a third of the plants going to die. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the second angel sounded. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Yes, sir. And the third part of the sea became blood. So the third part of the sea became blood. What's going to happen when that sea become blood? Go ahead. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. You see what's about to happen right here when these trumpets are blown? If you're not in the place of safety, you're going to be a part of this. I'm not going to be a part of this right here. Uh, I'm going to be in God's wilderness. 
Amen. This is what these trumpets are bringing. These seals are being broken. I Meaning that trumpet blow, go do your work, angels. Go do your work, evil people upon this earth. He unleashing the pain and suffering. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. Yes, sir. Burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of water. Go ahead. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Mm -hmm. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. It's going to be very, it is not going to be very much clean water. Only clean, a lot of the water, clean water going to be in the wilderness. He said, this star is going to make the waters bitter. It's going to kill a lot of the people. That's the third trumpet, right? Third angel blowing. Go ahead. Verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten. Mm -hmm. And the third part of the moon. And the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened. And the day shone not for a third part of it. And the night likewise. So the light we see in the morning time is not going to be the same. The sun gonna be dark and gloomy. The moon gonna be dark and gloomy. It's gonna be this world gonna be jacked up to the eleventh or the hundredth power. You ain't never seen nothing like this. This is great tribulation that God tells us to prepare ourselves in our minds so we can get in the place of safety. Go ahead. Verse thirteen. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. Yes, sir. Saying with a loud voice, "Whoa, whoa." Woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. You see what he said? Woe meaning warning, warning to the inhabitants. That's me and you. He warned the inhabitants of the earth about all this pain and destruction that is coming to this earth. Prepare yourself. You finish with that one? Yes, Let's go to Revelation chapter 16. Let's see what happened. When he said, whoa, 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 to the inhabitants. Let's see what's going to happen to the inhabitants of the earth if they are not in the place of safety. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 1. We give you a little more detail on the first five trumpets that are blown. Let me show you. This great tribulation going to hit this earth, y'all. It's very, very vital that we are here tonight and to understand at this time, about the memorial of blowing the trumpets. Revelation 16 and verse 1. We can get it, go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. So he's telling these seven angels that blowing the trumpet, he's giving them a veil or a vow to open something up to the earth, to give it to the earth. What is that? Go ahead. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. Yes, sir. And there fell a noise of a grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, mm. and upon them which worshiped his image. Understand this, if you take that mark, some people say the computer chip, some people say whatever it is. If you take anything under your skin that when you can buy and sell, God said, I ain't got nothing to do with you, and I'm gonna put some pain on the person who take this mark. Because a lot of people are led by their bellies you ain't going to have food and water. And the only way you're going to get this food and water from these evil people is from the mark of the beast, which is his symbol in your head and your hand. Go ahead. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. Yes, sir. And it became as the blood of a dead man. Mm -hmm. And every living soul died in the sea. Yes, sir. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water. And they became blood. So all the water is bloody at this time. Can you imagine trying to drink bloody, bitter water? That's, that's sickening. You don't want to be in this place. You don't want to be in this position of have to drink this stuff. Go ahead. And I heard the angel of the water say, mm -hmm. Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged us. So this is righteous? <laughs> he said, Thou art righteous, Lord. The angel said, yes, Lord, that's good for what, good that you did this to the earth. Because he's been warning us in every generation mm -hmm. through keeping the memorial trumpet, keeping the high days. Yes, Make sure you understand where to be and what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 6. For they, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, mm -hmm. and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Because most of the people today don't, that in the word of God don't die. They shed the blood. When we, at this time, when, when we go about this world and teaching the truth, many that don't get in the world, they're going to kill them. Period. They're going to kill them. 
Go ahead. Verse 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Yes, sir. Put it on mute, JP. Pull it down and put it on mute. Read that again. Verse 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. He said, true and righteous are your judgments. This is what he said he's going to do. And God is not a man that he will lie. He's going to perform this. And people think, oh, man, I'm going to be raptured out of the earth. And believe, believe me, all these trumpets, all this pain and suffering got to take place before Jesus even come on the seventh trumpet. Yes, and I'm going to show you that. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, mm -hmm. and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Who's these men he going to scorch? Go ahead. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. So God is scorching them with the sun. They still cussing God out. They didn't even repent. Period. Why? Because they don't know him. They think he's some type of alien. But he's going to show you. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Yes, sir. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Let's see. What is this fifth angel there poured out upon the seat, the, the seat of the beast? Let's go to Revelation chapter 9 again. Let's see what is he talking about here. What kind of pain he going to bring? Revelation chapter 9 and verse 1. These trumpets are very vital, y'all, that we read this. And most of the people inside the church do not go to the book of Revelation. We go in the book of Revelation all the time. It don't matter. We can break it down. We can break it down. But they don't, want to, they don't want to say this because you're going to run a lot of people away because they're going to get scared. They're going to say, man, he's breaking my spirit down. No, this is true. This is vital for your salvation to understand this. Revelation chapter 9, we're going to start with verse 1. Let's see about this seat that this angel poured upon. Go ahead. Verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Yes, sir. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. This star is Satan. For him was given the key. He's the controller of all these military uh, nations. All these nations that decided of Satan run them all. He run them all. I'm going to show you that. Go ahead. Verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit. Yes, sir. As the smoke of a great furnace. Mm -hmm. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now this pit is talking about the control over the earth. He's going to open up the pit, meaning he's going to assume authority, leadership. He's the God of all these evil nations that are upon this earth. Let me show you about this star. This whole new spot that we come back in Revelation chapter 9. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Let's see this star, which is Satan, fall from heaven. It's all in here. Isaiah 14. I'm going to start with verse 12. This is the memorial blowing the trumpets. And believe me, it's a blessing for you all to be here. To take a part. To be a part of this. Let's see the star that fell forever. Who is it? It's all in the book. I ain't got to interpret nothing. The Bible won't interpret itself. Isaiah 14, start with verse 12. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, yes, sir. son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nations? Who is this star? Satan, he fell. Michael took the Satan and threw him out. He weakened the nation. He controlled the nations. Go ahead. 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Yes, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm -hmm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. This, it, this is what Lucifer said. I'm going to exalt my throne upon the stars of God. Meaning that the angels of God, he's going to assume authority. This is what he thinks. This is the star that he threw out. Go ahead. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation mm -hmm. in the sides of the north. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. Yes, sir. I will be like the most high. He want to be like God. Mm -hmm. This is the one that weakened the nations. Go ahead. 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. What pit we just read about? We read about that in Revelation chapter 9, right? Go ahead. 16. They that they that 